More than 130 years ago, a little community of pioneers in a remote northern Arizona valley devolved into a bloodbath of ambushes, murders, and massacres. During the Pleasant Valley War, which lasted five years, lawmen, Apache raids, vigilantes, and fellow ranchers killed 18 individuals and wounded four. However, there is so much more to know about what exactly did the Apaches do in the Wild West era. Welcome to Tangy History. A renowned historian, Paul Andrew Hutton, who also talks about the Apaches in his epic chronicle, The Apache Wars, where he takes his readers on a horseback ride through the heart of what the Mexicans and Spanish before them called Apacheria, the region inhabited by the Apache people that stretched from the Arkansas River into what are now the northern states of Mexico, as well as from central Texas through New Mexico to central Arizona. Flanked by bands of hardened, elusive Mescalero and Chiricahua warriors, you cross the Rio Grande and into the fearsome Sierra del Diablo range. As you progress, your heart pulses with excitement and expectation, attracted into the wild world of fearsome warriors and stunning vistas. You vividly envision the terrible terrain with its bleak and dangerous landscape of rocky mountains and cruel deserts. Every pass, rock, and cactus seems to hide some danger, whether an arrow, Winchester, or rifle bullet, or something even worse. When they talk about Apaches, especially when someone is up against them during a fight, it is always considered as a thing of great wisdom to keep one bullet for yourself, because to be held captive by the Apaches would be the last thing you'd ever wish for. And that's what Hutton also talks about, that it was not good to be taken captive by the Apaches. Hutton's work is an impressive contribution to the Apache canon that includes Once They Moved Like the Wind by David Roberts, 1994, The Apaches, Eagles of the Southwest by D.E. Worcester, 1992, Geronimo's story of his life as told to S.M. Barrett, 1906, and of course, the Blueberry comic book series that chronicles the adventures of Mike Steve Donovan, alias Blueberry, on his travels through the Old West. Hutton carefully traces the long history of the violent confrontation between the unyielding indigenous nation of the Spanish, Mexicans, and Americans, culminating in a murderous war. The book is replete with vivid details worthy of John Ford, such as Nantan Eclaten, a disparaging epithet given by Apaches to Greenhorn soldiers that means a raw and virgin lieutenant. The depiction examines the intricate history of repeated Apache raids and subsequent retaliations in which a kidnapping takes center stage. This half-century of conflict was marked by acts of treachery, revenge, and forced relocations to inhospitable reservations governed by corrupt officials. But why is that so? And why are Apaches considered this ruthless? In 1861, a young white boy named Felix Ward, who would later be known as Mickey Free, was taken by Arabipa Apaches during a raid on his family's ranch. The abduction set into motion a series of events that would ultimately shape the destiny of the Apache lands. The story of Mickey Free has always intrigued me, writes Hutton. He was a character struck between two worlds and civilizations, constantly conflicted, alienated, and experiencing identity crises. Mickey Free was reared as an Apache, but no one in either world trusted him completely, but both sides required him as a guide, explorer, and interpreter for the United States Army. As a European orphan raised in the United States, Hutton understands Mickey Free's inner turmoil. The Chiricahuas considered Free a nuisance and blamed him for starting Cochise's killing rampage, which killed 150 people in two months. But when it comes to savagery, both sides were violent and savage, but as David Roberts had previously stated, the Apaches were particularly cruel. Hutton recalls how they skinned and burned white captives alive, as well as crushing tiny children's skulls against a stone to kill them. In his book, Hutton also talks about pretty much the same thing. According to him, the Apaches were New World Vikings who raided, pillaged, and plundered. They were particularly feared during wartime, and were well known for their inhumane treatment of detainees. 
They admired anyone who had the ingenuity to create agonizing ordeals. You truly wished that you had that final bullet, as they used to say on the border. The Apaches held high regard for captives who shone courage in the face of torture. The Americans were equally merciless. After murdering Mangas Coloradas, his head was severed and displayed publicly. As per Hutton's opinion, everyone in his book, Spaniards, Mexicans, Apaches and Americans, was capable of extreme cruelty. While it is true that Apaches appear to have a cultural propensity for cruelty, there was a great deal of hypocrisy among Americans who professed to be civilized while indulging in barbaric behavior. It was all quite medieval. Hutton adds that Crook referred to the Apaches as the tigers of the human race. They were extremely tough fighters who could outrun cavalry on foot. They could launch seven arrows into the air before the first one struck the ground. They understood the terrain and how to use it to their advantage. Their amazing mobility made them experts of guerrilla warfare, as it is known today. Of fact, American soldiers' memoirs often overstated their abilities in order to make their own successes appear more significant. The Apaches were fewer in number than the Plains Indians to the north, making them less likely to risk their lives unnecessarily. But apart from all their brutality, Apaches did follow some norms and beliefs. Apache civilization was based on extended families, with each family unit residing near other groups of the same type. This enabled unification in social, ecclesiastical, and military concerns. While men held leadership positions in the tribe, women also performed important roles and were given the opportunity to take on substantial tasks. The Apaches had their own distinctive festivals and dances that were an important element of their culture. For example, the sunrise dance, was a crucial rite done by young girls to receive blessings as they matured into women. They also celebrated the dance of the mountain spirit, in which dancers disguised themselves as these creatures. The Apaches maintained a tight set of regulations that kept their civilization in order. Disputes among tribe members were settled by investigations or trials presided over by the tribal leader. The accused and accuser had the right to present witnesses and testimony was provided freely without the use of oaths. Outside of the courtroom, the Apaches followed norms of conduct that applied to many parts of their daily lives. They revered specific sites as sacrosanct, such as the Salt Lake, where it was forbidden to hurt any creature or enemy, signifying their love for the land and environment. One of the most infamous figures in Apache history is Geronimo. Born as Goyale in 1829, he witnessed the massacre of his mother, wife, and children at the hands of Mexican soldiers which fueled a lifelong desire for revenge. Geronimo became known for his bravery and dedication to the fight against the Mexicans and later against the American forces. Geronimo's life was marked by battles, escapes, and surrenders. He became a symbol of Apache resistance and fought against the attempts of the US government to confine his people to reservations. Despite his legendary status, Geronimo ultimately lived his final years as a celebrity participating in fairs and festivals of the Old West. The Apaches' struggle for survival pitted them against the United States forces, who sought to expand their territory and subdue what they deemed savage tribes. The conflicts between the Apaches and the Americans escalated over the years, with both sides perpetrating atrocities and engaging in numerous armed confrontations. The hostility between the two parties resulted in a series of wars, known as the Apache Wars, characterized by bloodshed, massacres, and betrayals. Geronimo emerged as a prominent leader during this period, challenging the might of the American forces and becoming a symbol of resilience and resistance. Continued Spanish encroachment on Apache land, the Comanche, Mexican dominance, and American occupation of Apache ancestral sites all kept the Apache down. But it was the deployment of Apache from other tribes as scouts that dealt the last blow. When Geronimo surrendered to Crook, he stated that he had always believed he could fight eternally, but when Crook arrived, accompanied by his own people, he realized he had to either make peace or die fighting. Crook had assured Geronimo that after a brief absence he would be permitted to return home, but the governor had other intentions. After a few years in Florida, Geronimo was sent to Oklahoma, where he died. And that's all for this video, fellas. Let us know what you think of the life of this ruler in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.